do if you were in a code behind. Suddenly it would become a controller of its own and you'd be off and doing all sorts of bad stuff. Separation of concerns is the most important thing to remember about ASP.NET MVC. The routing table does what it does. It knows how to route things, and that's it. Controllers don't know who called them. This is a really important thing. We didn't talk about testing, but it's important to note that if a controller got a method called and it doesn't care who called it, then you could go and call it inside of a test. And that's how testing works in ASP.NET MVC. Let's see if John included any tests. Oh. Denied. Let's bring up Nerd Dinner. I'll show you one or two tests just to get the idea. Because, you know, if you've ever tried to do testing before, if you've ever tried to do testing in um, uh, web forms, it's, it sucks. All right, so there's like a really, really, really basic test. This is testing like a, this is part of Nerd Dinner, but new home controller, call the method, and then a view result comes back. And then I look at that and tell if it's not null. Other things that I might want to do would be assert that the view model looks right. Uh, I might want to assert that um, the view that came back was the one that I wanted. I mean, all the different tests that you could potentially do. What's significant about showing you this is that thing on line 27, where I knew up a controller. That's the first time you've ever seen anybody knew up a controller, right? This whole time, no one has ever said controller C equals new controller, right? That's been happening automatically. So when you're running ASP.NET MVC, your controllers get made and your methods get called. But when you're doing it in testing, you have to make the controllers and you have to call the methods and then assert the results. But it also underscores how important it is to have separation of concerns. What would happen if your controller said response.write? Would it work at runtime? Sure, absolutely. You're inside of ASP.NET, you're inside of IIS, it would totally work. Is that its responsibility? No. Would it break in the test? Absolutely. Because there is no response object. There's no HTTP context. This test is going to run without a web server. So you want to make sure that your controllers, even though they may do lots and lots and lots of stuff, that they don't go and touch external resources that they don't have access to. Separation of concerns. They do that one thing that they focus on. You can test your routes, you can test your controllers, you can test your models, but make sure that you're testing functionality, that you're testing that user story and not um, indirectly calling something like, uh, like the web server. Now, we didn't talk about view results. Let's speak about that for a second. This is actually kind of an interesting point to end on because it shows you how much thought that the guys have been putting into making this thing really smart about separation of concerns. In previous versions of ASP.NET MVC, early, early, early versions, when they were first doing this, your methods looked like this. So I've got this thing called, and everything we just talked about worked. You know, someone would, someone would make a controller, someone would call details, and then you'd call view. But think about the call stack, and this is where I bring it all the way around to the, what we talked about before. Think about what the call stack would look like here. I'm going to call view. Which way does that send me up the call stack, up or down? It makes me go up one more. And now I'm in the view method. And what's the detail, what's person controller details doing? It's down one in the call stack, sitting around, waiting for me to finish. And what do views do? Well, they talk to IIS, and they spit things out to the, to the web server, and they response dot write, and they talk to, you know, they do all that kind of stuff that is specific to, to rendering angle brackets. So they needed to figure out a way to get out of here. So rather than actually doing it, rather than actually saying, view, make the view right now, they say return view, where the view returns something that is derived from action result. In this case, it's called a view result. And that view result isn't actually the result of the view doing its thing. The view didn't actually render. 
it's an expression of their intent to do that view. But by the fact, by virtue of the fact that they returned, where does the call stack go? Right? They get to let go, and the controller is not involved anymore. The controller did all of its work up until the point where it called the view, and then rather than actually doing it, it kind of put together a letter. This is my intent to call a view. I'll be passing you this view model. Da, 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 da. Goodbye. I wish you and your family well. And then it backs off the call stack. And then the ASP.NET MVC runtime then looks at that letter and says, oh, I guess I need to call this view. And then it goes forward in the call stack. And it is that change from that void to action result from calling view directly to return that enables you to do that kind of testing that we just saw a second ago and makes the whole system work in a really cool way. How could I have tested that? If that returned a void, I'd be stuck. So the guys in the ASP.NET MVC team are putting a lot of thought into trying to keep things clean, trying to keep things modular, and trying to keep things to have a single responsibility. We saw how you hit a URL, it goes through routing. Routing can be fairly complicated to understand, but there are debuggers to allow you to visualize that. Routing is incredibly flexible. Routes happen in the order that they are listed. So you want to think about greedy routes and how you want to lay those out. We saw how to make controllers and how you can have uh, a controller is named something controller, home controller, whatever controller, and that's a convention that the methods and the controllers then map to folders in the view, views directory. So home controller, home views, person controller, person views, details method, details view. We saw how those things mapped. We saw how you can have a view that is a loosely um, typed view, where you can just pass view data in hash tables. Or you can make a strongly typed view, where you can have view, you know, view page of person. We saw how then you spin through that information in the view. Maybe you pass it a view model that has uh, additional information that you want it to do. You see, at, at all of the different points here, there is an understanding that HTTP and that the web is there. ASP.NET MVC values HTTP. We saw how there was a controller that had HTTP post listed on it. Web forms values the control model, the abstraction, the fully encapsulated um, chunk of functionality, drag a data grid, double click. Everything's nice and organized. That doesn't exist in the MVC world. MVC really values HTTP. If you like doing JavaScript, if you like HTML, then you want to spend some time with MVC. If you like that more kind of, you know, more productive but less detail-oriented perspective, then you want to go with web forms. If you want to kind of get stuff done and you want to make a beautiful site that maybe isn't beautiful when you say view source, but it works, think about web forms. I always use the analogy, uh, Car versus motorcycle. You can't look at a person who drives a car and say, that's a bad person, and I don't value, I don't like that person. With the, no one should ever drive a car. People who drive cars or minivans value different things. They want to be able to put all the kids and take them to football practice and get groceries. You can't take five kids to football practice and buy groceries on a motorcycle. If you're on a motorcycle, you value different things, but they're both kinds of vehicles. The same thing exists in web forms versus MVC. MVC values testing, single responsibility, separation of concerns, HTTP, JavaScript, and HTML. 